beautiful people how y'all doing just letting y'all know this month is child abuse prevention month with that being said we will be releasing some videos that we put on tiktok <sighs> as i continue so some of these videos may be a year maybe two years old and it may contain some language that may make some of y'all uncomfortable y'all give me a little bit of grace with that but it's all about education absolutely appreciate y'all feedback and sharing liking and asking questions all right check with y'all soon all right let's chop it up this is a call for action if you're an attorney working in family law a caseworker a parent that's dealt with cps or a child that grew up in the system hit me up asap i've been talking about doing an episode for a year and a half how you doing about child welfare for some time i have some connections already but i want to get a little bit of a wider scope of people so you can dm me on here or you can go to my website at www.everythingculture.com or just hit me up on instagram all that'll work but i believe it's important for all of us to have this conversation especially from a personal and professional level so I'm gonna be trying to give y'all some advice about CPS or Department of Family Protective Services, specifically in Texas, because that's what I know the most. And you're free to respectfully tell me how you feel about things or guide me in the right direction. I don't know where to start, so let me just start. Being a CPS caseworker was one of the hardest jobs I've had in my life. And I used to do repo. I used to get guns pointed at me while repoing people's furniture. Shout out to Renner Center. I joke around, but I'm dead serious hug a caseworker with their permission like they need a little buy them a drink buy them lunch it's extremely stressful especially the ones that actually care about the children now cps have gotten progressively better but it's still difficult my caseload was like 33 kids that i had to see um once per month that's the minimum and that's on top of going to schools going to their house going to court three to four times a week and doing all the paperwork you need to do you don't get paid you get paid less than teachers you get cussed out by everybody you're to blame for everything the kids mad at you the parents mad at you the family members mad at you the, the attorneys mad at you your supervisor mad at you the judge is mad at you it's like <laughs> what can we do and you could be like look man i'm just trying to do my job like usually you're the scapegoat you know that's how they usually treat the caseworker as a scapegoat just blame them and go for it and hear me out some caseworkers need to be blamed. Every caseworker is not great. Some caseworkers' intentions are not good. I will say that very well. Some are not. But the ones who try, it's, it's hard. Really, it is. Let me start out by sharing my experience. CPS is my first job out of college. You know, I majored in psychology. I wanted to work with families and children. And boom, shakalaka, I'm here. Every caseworker, if things are still the same, must go through something called basic skills and development training, BSD, all right? It's a 90 day training and it's pretty cool. I will say that. That's what really got me into diversity, equity, and inclusion and cultural diversity. And if you go to my second video I ever posted on TikTok, I was so pissed off at Trump for trying to take away cultural diversity training for state employees because that shit is important. But we're gonna talk about that later. But I remember being in this training, it was me, and I think maybe one other black male there, you know, black men, we need, we are needed in this realm. Majority of the people in the room were African-American women. Then it was Caucasian women after that. And it was maybe one white male in that room. And some of the people in that training, I was looking around. I'm like, you ain't about to make it, baby. You ain't about to make it. And no lie. Some people didn't even make it past the 90 day training. We kept in touch with everyone for the most part. A lot of people dropped out within that first two months, you know? Hell, I made it for two years and I was out. I went to a nonprofit by the name of CASA. That training teaches you the basics, but nothing really can prepare you for what you're about to step into as a caseworker. I was in conservatorship, meaning I work with children um, when the case is already open within the court. What's up, y'all? Just coming here to educate y'all a little bit more about CPS and stuff like that. But let's talk about the history of CPS. How did it start? Trigger warning. Gonna be talking about a little bit of child abuse. We're talking about CPS here. Okay. This little girl is Mary Allen. Mary Allen's parents couldn't take care of her. Had to give her up to some neighbors. 
that as soon as the family was completely out of the picture, the father died, the mother was missing, her adoptive family started to beat her and neglect her. But another neighbor in the community by the name of Etta Wheeler recognized the abuse and neglect and decided something had to be done. And that's when she reached out to the founder of the SPCA for help. Yes, the founder of Animal Cruelty to help this child. Allegedly, they took Mary Allen into the court with a horse blanket. The family was charged with abuse and neglect to this child. So in 1875, the Society for Cruelty for Children was founded and all because of Mary Allen's case. I've been drinking, so let's talk more about CPS. So while you're in your, like, your last 30 days of BSD, you take on like a case, your first case, you take on one while you're in training, okay? Let me tell y'all, my one case, technically it still ain't over yet. So my first case was a family of four, three boys, 17, 15, and 11, and one girl, which was eight. They came into care, this is like their second time in care, and the mother tried to rob a woman. The one mother was selling drugs and she was trying to rob the woman. The woman was trying to get her money back or something like that. And the mother ended up running over the woman while the kids were in the car. Yeah, crazy. The kids were placed with a family. No, the kids were in a foster home at first, okay? The kids were in several foster homes. They were like in three different foster homes. They were separated. And I was placing them all together with their aunt. You know, they're coming with family. And you got to use your own vehicle the whole nine when you work in CPS in Harris County. And I remember picking each one of the kids up and one of the kids would not stop crying. This man was boo hooing. I'm like, man, you going with family. You should be happy. You know what I mean? But come to find out like he was like the, the white sheep of the family and the rest of his siblings really fuck with him. They like bullied the shit out of him. They but anyway, so this is my first case y'all. I really don't know. Shit. Okay, all that training was cool, but it tells you what you're supposed to do, but it really doesn't tell you all the that come with it, okay? So once again, I was a conservatorship worker. Watch my other video so you'll understand what the different type of titles and CPS represent. So every case need a family group conference. So we had to have our family group conference, okay? This is when the parents come in and talk about their family plan, child plan, all that stuff. The stuff they need to do to get their kids back. And I could not find the mother. She was not answering my phone calls, you know, any number I had, couldn't reach her. Nobody in the family knew where she was at, whatever. So she hasn't done So I had to tell my supervisor, you know, I can't say nothing. She hasn't went to any of the providers to send her to. She hasn't answered any of my calls, so she hasn't done anything. Y'all, tell me why. She shows up to this FGC with paperwork and talk. She made me look like a motherfucking fool. She made me look incompetent than a bro. If my own supervisor was shaking his head at me, like she had paperwork from parenting classes, she had paperwork from her, she had drug tests, she had the whole nine, all this stuff I did not have. And I'm like, how? No, trust me, you got to believe me. 